On May 2nd, 1863, during the Battle of Chancellorsville, Confederate night pickets mistakenly shot General Stonewall Jackson. The general was eventually taken to the nearby Wilderness Tavern, where his left arm was amputated and tossed outside the medical tent, where the general's military chaplain retrieved the arm and eventually brought it here to Elmwood Plantation, where it was given a Christian burial. After his arm was amputated, General Jackson was brought here to the Chandler Farm at Guinea Station. The General was placed on a bed in the farm office where he died of pneumonia on May 10, 1863. Formerly named Guinea Station, on the Richmond, Fredericksburg, and Potomac Railroad. Guinea was a busy Confederate supply base during the Civil War. The Jackson Shrine is the cottage to your left. Once it was the office of Thomas Coleman Chandler's Plantation, Fairfield. Today, it is the only structure remaining. In the painting, you see Fairfield as it was when the Chandlers lived here. The picture, however, does not represent a typical plantation scene. It depicts a unique and momentous occasion. The arrival of the ambulance carrying General T.J. Stonewall Jackson from the distant field hospital near Chancellorsville, where his left arm was amputated. He had been wounded by the mistaken fire of his own men at 9 p.m. May 2nd, 1863. It is now late on the day of May 4th. Jackson had come to Fairfield to recuperate. The Chandlers offered their brick dwelling, but Dr. Hunter McGuire, medical director of Jackson's Corps, preferred the privacy of the office. Jackson remembered the kindness shown by Mr. and Mrs. Chandler when he camped on Fairfield before the Battle of Fredericksburg in December of 1862. His memories of Guinea at another time were sweeter still. For at the little station in April of 1863, he picked up his wife and infant daughter, Julia, who had come to visit his Fredericksburg headquarters. That was his first sight of Julia. The mother and child went to Richmond when the Chancellorsville campaign opened. On this showery evening of May 4th, while Mary Anna Jackson and Julia await transportation, General Jackson's ambulance, with its small cavalcade, winds up the hill here, turns past the log stable, and stops alongside the fence by the office. 
The stretcher bearers are removing the general from the vehicle. Mr. Chandler stands at the gate to greet his guest. From upstairs in the main house, Mrs. Chandler and her 12-year-old daughter Lucy watch the arrival. Two other Chandler children at the corner of the house and servants and soldiers look on solemnly. Members of Jackson's staff walk toward the office. Over in the distance, where Jackson's tent was pitched in 1862, are Confederate quartermaster tents and some of the plantation slave quarters. In the office room facing the railroad, a fire has been kindled to dispel the spring damp. Shortly, General Jackson will be in bed there. From this scene of the 4th of May, he will not return to the world of men and affairs. By the time of the arrival of Mrs. Jackson and Julia on May 7th, pneumonia had set in and the general was sinking. Sunday, May 10th, was a soft day full of bird song. In the afternoon, about a quarter after three, Mrs. Chandler and Lucy saw Anna Jackson being helped from the office and knew that the end had come. Surrounded by Lily of the Valley and other spring flowers from the Chandler garden, Jackson's body was placed in the parlor of the big house. Later, it was taken to Richmond and then to Lexington for burial. The genius of this brilliant American soldier, which pervades the woods and fields of so many battlegrounds, abides here at Chandler's, where he died in cheerful and courageous quiet. As the British statesman David Lloyd George said, in this little house, the Confederacy also died. General Jackson died in this room on May 10, 1863.